Hi, Basho2. Uh, I'm going to send you these tabs. And uh, they're pretty sketchy. So you're going to want to listen to that video. And uh, I'll break some things down for you and give you some notes on, the, on what I've written out. So on the first page, look up at the top. There's basically four chords. Even though old-time banjo players aren't supposed to play chords, there's four chords that you'll use in the song. So one, you know you're we're in double C tuning, so it's C, G, C, B, and of course the drum is a G. And so uh, a good site to go to for chords, and where I got some help on this was is Mike Iverson's uh, banjo website. It's a blue stem something. I just Google Mike Iverson, I-V-E-R-S-O-N. But uh, you got your C chord. Um, but in this, I like to play it at the fifth fret with my ring finger on the first string of the fifth fret and my middle finger on the third string of the fifth fret. And you get kind of a different voicing. And I usually, I don't notate this on the tab, but I slide into it. There's some other slides I don't uh, notate either, but I'll, we'll get to that. So there's the C. There's B, which, as you see here, you're not playing the fourth string. You're only playing the top three. Oops. So it's not really a chord. It's two notes, two distinct notes. And a drone that doesn't really fit, but that's kind of a property of old times five-string banjo. So you just kind of let it create the tension it's going to create. And then you've got uh, E flat, which uh, is just kind of like taking... If you're playing open C, you can play open D with a bar chord. I don't know if you know guitar. Uh, this is like an E flat with that, but I usually am using my ring finger to fret, like it shows here, the, the uh, second, third, and fourth string for my E flat. And again, the drone is going to be there and may not necessarily fit, but that's okay. And then F, and you'll usually see F on other chord sites for double C. But F is notated there, and it's an open chord, all four. Uh, so it's in, I believe it's an F major. Uh, the Blue Oyster Colt song's in, in uh, B major, but the riff starts on uh, F sharp. Here, the key should be F, I believe. You'd have to ask somebody who knows music. Keys, key is F, but uh, the riff starts on a C. So I just transposed the chords from the uh, Blue Oyster Colt song. And so the chord progression goes from C, and this is in the, in the verse, from C to B to E flat to F, and then back to C. And I usually end up playing an open C. So uh, there's your chords. I do a little sketch of how I play it in the video, where I have a little intro we'll get to in a sec. That's just an intro strumming pattern or picking pattern. Uh, play the riff through four times. If you see here, I've done three versions of the riff that you can choose from I kind of played either one at any time you know but once you're comfortable with all three of them you interchange them or mix them up or whatever you want to do then a verse chorus verse chorus the riff a couple times and then that kind of adopted the bass riff that's on the second page from the Blue Oyster Cult song and played a little something on that and then you do one more chorus and and kind of a a verse singing about how nature is the <laughs> points out the folly of man and such so on riff version one, I'll play it just as it's tabbed here because I don't think I exactly play it like this. But this is a pretty straightforward claw hammer version of the riff. That's riff version one. all the drone notes there. So that's version one, pretty straightforward. Again, the drone notes are not always going to fit, uh, so playing this slow could sound dissonant, but it works when you're full speed well enough. Version two, I throw in a little M skip, and that's another thing to look on Mike Iverson's side, or if you have the Ken Perlman book, I don't know how far you are on banjo. But um, it's just a, a way to 
notate syncopation a lot of times. You look in measure six, I've marked it there on, on riff version two. Uh, there's a little X. So you're not, it's a, it's a tied note. You're not, uh, if you didn't have that tie, it would be. This is measure six. So you're not uh, playing the note with X under it, so it's just. So you're not doing it, you're doing it. So a lot of guys, Ken Perlman and Mike Iverson will notate a syncopation like that and call it an M skip. And a lot of times where that X is, I'll tap the head of the band. Down. Usually with my fingers on here, a lot of people use their thumb back here, but however, it's a drum. So version two would go like this. But the uh, so that measure six. And measure eight is where I'm I, and I add this wherever I want in the video, but it's it's just a double thumbing pattern. And that's another thing. There's a great exercise on Mike Iverson's website on how to, to get your thumb working where it needs to go. Um, one pattern is kind of like this where you're playing. Uh, and you can do it right now to practice, but index on the first string and thumb lands on the second string. And then your index comes back down on the first string and your thumb catches the fifth string. So it's... Hold on. So I'm just doing that down on, on measure eight on the... Uh, third and fourth string, which is a little trickier, but uh, you get used to it, especially if you go practice that uh, the drills on Mike Iverson's site. But it's uh, as it's written there is, and I'll usually slide a little bit. So riff version two is. Version three is what I'm usually doing, and so it's just kind of a using. The, excuse me. Uh, it's a different kind of skip, and I kind of get into a pattern where it's comfortable for me to strum like that. But it's played exactly like uh, like this. played the first three measures but uh, let's look at that again uh, so because I got to play it right so let's look at just the first measure so I'm playing the I'm doing the bum ditty and then I'm skipping that that next pair of eighth notes and dropping my thumb on the fourth string so it's Instead of, I can't even do it like that uh, without, but with the skip, that X, it's same thing on uh, two measures ahead on the E flat shape. And then there's a regular M skip like in version two on the second measure. So the whole thing, all four measures of version three sound like this. skips in it uh, once you have that down you can switch them all around play the riffs however you want 
Uh, after all the after you play the riff four times, you can play version one four times or whatever. You go into the the. Uh, I think I've marked it as verse. Oh yeah, it's verse. After you go through the riff four times, then you do the verse, and that's at that C. So. I usually slide on it, but if you just want to play it straight, it's going to be, uh, this is on the verse, and I've kind of marked the chords there, crammed them in between the lines, but. And that last note isn't written there, I'm just, I'm just ending it. So it's. Messy on the E flat, I kind of graze over it. You don't always need to be playing all three notes. You can play two. I mean, after all, these are octaves. So as long as you're getting two of the notes, you're good and get through it. It's not going to be perfect. And it's not going to sound great played slow. But uh, so fast, I might slide into it too. something different on the F sometimes. I, I might go. Uh, I do some other kind of double thumbing thing. But uh, play it like this and it sounds good. That's what I do. I just, uh, I play it kind of like the B there. I cut right into it with the double thumb. Basically you get the double thumbing thing down and, and it gets really comfortable. Uh, one more time like it's written. One more time like it's actually written. And then riff. Um, um, I believe you do the verse part two times. Uh, uh, how, I don't remember how it goes. With a girl's little grandma said a terrible sound. He pulls his spin out, tension wires down. Riff once. Helpless people on subway train scream to God. So, uh, play the riff, then the, then, or play the verse, then the riff, and the verse. Then one more riff, and it leads you to the chorus. Uh, there's version one of the chorus, and this is on B, on that B chord. I'll play it exactly like it's written. Those are my lazy repeat signs. So just that four times. straightforward uh, it's I got a little messy with the pencil in here but uh, you should be able to decipher that and there's one M skip uh, when it slides and as you hammer on like from zero to two on the third string can hold that as you hammer through the the chord and up to and when you hammer onto the, the uh, third fret uh, version two of the chorus and the whole time you're singing uh, say he's got to go uh, version two of that chorus is thing I do up the neck I think I do it the first time I play through it because I wasn't really planning this out I just kind of fiddled with this stuff enough times that I could switch it around 
Um, I don't think I at all do that's shown there on version two. I have to get through all that. This. But I think it sounds good. And that's just a... The thing up the neck um, is basically getting up to a C here. And then I don't know what you end up with up here. That's for you to decide. But there's kind of a it's kind of a weird uh, thing. But I'll play it exactly as it sounds. Uh, just that one part. Uh, so after that, here. That last part's an M skip. Oops. Instead of so, uh, so you can get a lot out of doing those little limb skips, but that's a reach, uh, and you might not even mess with it. You might go. As a matter of fact, I don't play it exactly like this. I don't think you could do whatever you want on that, uh, but uh, that's it is kind of a reach to that. 8th fret. So one more time I'll play it exactly as it's written. I think I marked it. It's measure 27. Maybe. One more time. One more time. Not that last part, but I think you get it. Uh, and that's the second part of it. But if you want, you can just play the the first part and sing along to it. And uh, the other part's just kind of an embellishment. kind of weird part and I don't totally notate this right but this bass riff where on the Blue Oyster Cult song it's uh, I kind of in this the way I play it in the video I uh, don't exactly do it this way I don't think it's a very good take but I went with it um, but just kind of after you're done with that second verse uh, chorus second time through on the chorus just kind of let it ring. Or the whole thing, whatever you want to do. Three, four. Uh, and either count it or uh, just let it ring and just whatever's comfortable. Just let it come out of nowhere. I'm not sure exactly how I count it in the video. On this, I had to subdivide and I, w I wasn't having any luck with like 16th notes with banjo tablature. So this is written, I think, double time. So it's like... One, one, two, three, four. Ba, 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 da, da, ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, da. Which I don't know if it's the right way to do it or not, but uh, I'll play through this thing so you can follow along to it. Basically, I wanted to make sure the notes in here were landing on the downbeat or the upbeat. So that's why I did the one, two, three, four, so I could make sure it lands on a downbeat or upbeat. And I think I got it decently. Uh, there's some eighth rests in there that look like little Ys. I'm not sure if I notate, notated those right or not, but here's how it kind of goes. There's a bunch of rests, and I'll tell you what to do with those in a second. And then it goes into the main uh, riff. Uh, it's easier to play fast. So uh, one more 
time with some some little hints here uh, or tips or like explanations. Apologies. Uh, I kind of in the video play the thumb wherever it's comfortable. Basically on the offbeat. You can play it there. You can play it more than where it's written is what I'm basically trying to say. And is up picked by the way. Uh, kind of like a Seeger strum I guess. I'm just up picking with the fink with this and doing pull offs. Same here with two fingers for that. Um, and for the main riff, when it comes back in, I kind of speed up and try to get back to a an old time pace from the from the slow funk kind of thing. Uh, you know what I think I do? I bring my thumb up, so I go. So it's kind of like an M skip with your thumb. I guess you can go and hit it with your index finger. Or you can pluck that upbeat note that leads into the next measure with a uh, an upstroke. You can go or not pick, but I think I use my thumb. I even use think I use my thumb there. you can do however you can get the notes out and whatever feels good on the timing I use my thumb on those thumb, thumb. so I should have marked those as thumb I'll do that real quick <laughs> I'm gonna mark a big T where I think I'm using a thumb so it's thumb there and then I kind of do a rest then I kind of just buy time and, and, and walk down to the chorus to that B. There'd be a lot of ways to do that, I'm sure. I don't know. There's probably a ton of ways to walk down to it. That's up to you. So one more time, it's kind of like... And that's the other thing I need to tell you about in a second. But uh, it gets to that part and it's. <sighs> so the other part, to fill in all those rests and between this. Uh, between all the little rests there and the two big measures of rest. On that NC down there, I've kind of written maybe what I might do as a palm muted thing. Uh, so the first one's kind of like. It's like uh, a strum through a brush and the fifth string and a brush on the top two or top three strings and either middle, either the third string or the fourth string. But so it sounds like that. And you can get different sounds out of it depending on where you're muting it on the, on the fretboard. So that's the first measure of that NC. The next one's kind of an M skip thing where it's. Uh, and you can do the same with just the thumb. Just whatever's comfortable. It's a drum, so. So that's kind of an idea what to do. I, I don't know exactly what I do. A little bit of everything. And bounce off the fifth string sometimes. And you can let the fifth string sound. So it'd be like, uh, uh, the other thing I don't notate here is then I do kind of a, uh, which I didn't think went real well. Uh, basically, Index finger on the uh, third fret and ring finger on the fifth. Uh, just 
play between those. Like you can play from the on the third uh, string of the third fret. You can play this with the open uh, fourth string. Just that kind of noodling around is what I do. kind of add some of that crap in there and then I go to that riff that that I decided has thumbs and it's messy but whatever gets to have fun with it that's just it's a fun thing to do uh, and that's pretty much it so three versions of the riff two versions of the uh, uh, chorus and then there's that verse uh, chord progression, and then this crazy funk thing. Uh, and then you do a, I think one more course, and then you do a, I'm coming, and then you do a, uh, uh, I think a last, watch the video, I don't know, you do a last, History is something I get out. Nature points out the folly of Godzilla, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, and seriously, send me a message or whatever for you need me to explain some of this really cryptic uh, tablature. But I'll send this to you tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and probably post the video tonight. Um, the one more thing on the intro. It's just a tack on thing. It's just kind of like. Uh, any of those round peak guys who do uh, uh, alternate string pull-offs. So right now I'm pulling off the open second string like that. Um, they do it a lot in, in open G tuning, but they'll play kind of uh, this kind of uh, bump a ditty, bump a ditty, bump a ditty kind of thing. So on this, uh, look on that intro, the first measure. It, that's showing a pull-off to an open string. So you play the fourth string, pull off on the second, and then do your a bum D. So it's like. So it's strike with your index, pull off with the, I use my middle finger on the second string, and then do the first string and the fifth. So it's. Hitting other strings, but that's okay. Um, the other version there, version two, is just the same thing. Only you're skipping that first string, that D string. I think I do that. Which also happens to make it easier to use your thumb. Sometimes I think I accidentally hit it. But then kind of get you into the uh, the main riff. That's pretty much it. Uh, I know it's kind of sloppy, but uh, especially that, that part where I'm adding thumbs. But uh, take a look at it. Uh, watch this.